What shall we do? I have business with Shinja. What's up guys, welcome back to my Battle Realms playthrough. My name is Alex and it seems like Kenji doesn't shy away from saying that he has got some business with Shinja. He also doesn't shy away from saying that Shinja has always had a talent for escape. But we've cornered him now and that snake doesn't have anywhere else to run. If we defeat him in battle, I can surely sway him to our cause. I must survive if we are to enlist Over his aid. Hmm. If it wasn't enough for uh. me to say that Kenji has to survive throughout the beginning of the campaign, you've got a constant reminder for that right there. So previously we tried to capture Shinja, but he managed to escape in the last moment. And it will not happen again. Anyways, maybe that came out a little bit dark, but... What I wanted to say is that this level shouldn't be too challenging, and that's because I'm being introduced right. with two new buildings, namely the Watchtower and the Target Range, where I yes. can train peasants into archers. And you will find out that archers are my favorite units in this game. Yes, sir. Right. As oh, usual, I'm starting off the with dragon. the basics, and that would be building yes. peasant huts and running for resources. My preference for now and probably for the future maps is to build a target range first and a watchtower right after that. The logic behind it is that I could set up my defenses right in the beginning of the level and All then right. take my time with the rest of the base. I'm going. Yes, sir. All right, I'm going. Yes, I'm going. I have a tendency of keeping my peasants in a 1 to 4 water and rice collecting ratio and leave the rest for constructing buildings. Yes, sir. 5 peasants should do the job of building a target range really quick and then move on to the watchtower construction. All right. I follow the dragon. All right. And now that I have mentioned the watchtowers, let's have a word about them. They have a special place in my heart and that's because I really yes. enjoy playing defensively and not only in this game. Unfortunately, you are unable to build more than the maximum amount of right. 4 watchtowers per map, but it is done for the sake of balancing the game. Now I don't know if you have noticed that it took some time to bring yes, down sir. Shinja's watchtower With in his outpost. Hand. So it is safe to say that the watchtowers are pretty sturdy and are like small powerhouses. They have their own skills or abilities, however you'd like to call it, and each clan has a different skill for it. The dragon and the serpent clan have a stun ability to freeze I enemy units focused. in their tracks and prohibit them from moving, although their stun differs right. from each other, but I'll explain about it later. Certainly. The wolf clan uh -huh. has a slow skill With that slows hand. movement and attack speed, I have and focused. the lotus clan has a devastating lighting ability that damages the nearby units. Over there. I follow so the I've done two things yes. while I explained I the, the principle dragon. of the watchtowers. Right. I've built a dojo and right. research zen accuracy in the target range, which will boost my archer's yes. damage. I've mentioned that this map introduced the target range and the watchtower, but I have left a couple of things out. Along with those two I am introduced with the cross training and the trees. Wait, what? On the it. trees? Yes, the trees. The forest in this game can be a big deal, and there are a few reasons for that, and I'll try to explain them. 
The first one would be the visibility. And what it means is when you are in the forest, your visibility is diminished greatly. You can barely see your unit. And the second one is your location. And what I mean by that is when you move across the forest, the uh, there is that bird flapping sound I and animation in the minimap to let you know that your enemy knows you're moving across the forest. But it can work vice versa as well, meaning I can know where my enemy is located as well. The third and last reason as far as I know is your ranged aiming ability. For example, if I encounter an enemy unit with my archer, my archer's arrows will have difficulty yes, in hitting the unit and will ricochet from the trees. To simplify that, it means that my archer is toast in case I face a melee unit. Now to move on to the cross training mechanism. If you've been watching, you've seen me sending a spearman into the target range and it started a training process like it does when I send a peasant. Cross training can result in different unit outcome depending on the unit you send. But the more you train, the higher the tier of this unit gets. The so let me try to explain and simplify that. If I send a peasant into training, no matter which follow. building, the unit that comes out will be a tier I 1 unit. Focus. If I send the same unit to another training ground, it will come out as a second tier unit. Sending it to another building to train will result in a third tier unit, which is the maximum tier a unit can get to. Yes. Now, you cannot send a unit to On a target. building it already visited. Furthermore, higher tier units are not necessarily stronger than lower tier units because there is something that is called type advantages and weaknesses, meaning one unit can be effective in dealing damage against the other, Certainly. or a unit can barely deal any damage against its opponent. Yes, sir. I think I've mastered a reasonable force to deal with Shinja, so I'll be on my way towards his camp now. Forward. Lead and I'll follow. Onward. Forward. I have focus. It shall be. I follow your lead. Onward. Forward. Blood shall flow. <laughs> I have no idea why someone would think that putting Shinja on the watchtower is a good idea, but perhaps someone in the comment section will enlighten me. I tried to run away for a moment because I wanted to show you something, but I guess I'll keep it for the Serpent campaign walkthrough. And that's it, Shinja is on our side now. It's over. Of course. You know who I am. Kenji, Serpent's son. And yet, you kept fighting. Once I knew a scared boy who ran from his accusers, I had to know if he was still that boy. Are you back to rule the Serpent Clan? Where is the Serpent's Orb? Going to break the world then? Show respect! As you wish, Otomo. You were charged with protecting the Orb. Where is it? At the Swan's Pool. The old man was more perceptive than we thought. He knew Serpent Home would fall. Lord Oja would never have given the orb to Geisha. No, he would have. How has the Swan's Pool survived? The Geisha are still considered untouchable. Seven years in the grave have weakened your father's grip. 
but the wolf and lotus still fear his name. Show me the safest path. As I serve the father, so I'll serve the son. The wolf clan has moved in here, driving the original farmers out. The stench of their shanties wafts south when the weather's clear. As in your father's time, the wolf barbarians are woefully unprepared to face a battle-ready foe. Still, the wolf are always spoiling for a fight. The Lotus Clan's lands are far to the east, but they have built an outpost here. One of their vile wizards has enslaved the local peasants with his dark magics. The villagers know the land well and would be valuable allies. The most direct route leads through the center of Riverside Town. The locals survive by trading with both Lotus and Wolf, so we're sure to be noticed. I gotta say that Shinja's voice actor did a fine job, epic voice right there. So this time I've got three provinces to choose from. The first option is the woefully unprepared wolf clan has driven the local farmers out, route them to clear the road to the north and meet the geisha. The second option is the town of Riverside is an embattled center of trade for both the wolf and lotus clans, the most direct route to the swan's pool but perhaps the most perilous. And the third option is the warlocks have enslaved this region's peasants, defeat the lotus to free them and clear the way to the swan's pool. In terms of choices only two of them are legit for me, the first and second one. The first province will treat me with an archer zen master and the second province with a melee zen master that has the ability to summon horses. You already know that I'm all for archery so I'll pick the first province and I'll see you guys in the next one.